everybody out there in ACN land and anybody else who may have snuck on here uh, this morning, we are going to talk about something very, very important. But first of all, I want you to know that I'm joining you this morning on free cell phone service running on the Verizon network. I'm super excited about that. And for those of you in Ohio and the rest of the country too, you should be jacked out of your mind. The company, as promised, launched Spectrum yesterday here in the state of Ohio. The packages are incredible. I saw Sean Dennedy down in Cincinnati. He's already popped four of them. And uh, the gun has gone off and it's running. And why the rest of you should be excited is because you know how the company does it. They launch one market first and then the next ones come as dominoes. So congratulations to everybody. A bunch of extra revenue, a bunch of extra points, a whole nother service coming out. Spectrum, spectrum, spectrum. The prices were great and uh, we're super jacked up about it. But this morning, I want to talk to you about working on you. So the saying is this, you're going to work 80% on yourself and 20% on your business because becoming the person you need to be is the person that people want to follow, right? The person that you are today has gotten you as far as you are going to go in life. That's a tough pill to swallow, but you have to become the person that people want to follow because our business is not about recruiting. Our business is about attracting. We are looking to attract people to our opportunity because they want what we have. And so to get to that position, you need to go through a thing called self-awareness. Now, self-awareness is tough. It's tough to figure out. Self-awareness is this. Ask yourself this question. Am I self-aware? And if you answer that, yes, absolutely. I know who I am. I know where I stand. I know what I stand for. I know how I come across. Well, you, my friend, are probably the least self-aware of anyone out there. We're saying, what? I know who I am. I know what I stand for. Nope. If you think that, then you, my friend, do not realize because self-aware people realize they have so much more to learn about themselves. Actually, being self-aware puts you in a position where you understand that you are not self-aware at all and that there's a lot more to learn. How crazy is that? It's exactly the opposite of what you think. Well, fortunately for us, to become self-aware, there are all kinds of studies that are out there, but there's actual activities that you can do to help you become self-aware. See, being self-aware is difficult. A lot of people avoid it, myself included, because we feel like if we become self-aware that it's a right or wrong thing. What, what I mean by that? Well, um, if I find out that uh, I, I don't like accountability and then I shun away from that, if I look at that as being a bad thing, right, and like that I was wrong or that I failed, then I may shun it. See, becoming self-aware is this. It's not right. It's not wrong. It's not a test to pass or fail. It's just a way for you to understand things that you can improve on. And not just improve on it for yourself, but for the people around you. All right. So that's pretty interesting um, um, stuff there. If you wrap your head around that, it's not good or bad. It's just is. And it helps you become a better person. So check it out. There are some self-awareness techniques. There are five major groupings of them. Okay. Number one is there are some written exercises that you can do. The second group are actual tests you can take. I'm gonna talk about each one of these individually here in a second. The third set is there are thought process exercises that you can go through to uh, become more self-aware. Number four is there's physical exercises that you can do. And number five is you can get help from others, okay? So those are the five groupings and inside there's a bunch of other subsets. There's actually 33 of them that, uh, that, that are out there, and it's probably even more than that, but there's 33 here. Now, I'm not gonna go, those of you who are like, oh my gosh, he's gonna go through all 33 this morning. No, I'm gonna, I picked out a handful of mine that are my favorites, and then I'm gonna post on this. By the way, I'm doing this on YouTube, so 
Uh, there'll be a YouTube video of this if you have people that could make on the Mojo call to be able to watch it. And I'm going to post the website that lists these and dives into them deeper. But having self-awareness means you have a clear recognition of your overall personality. Now, this includes everything. It includes for your strengths. It includes your weaknesses. Because, look, you need to know what your strengths are, too. Not just – some people think self-awareness is just like, where am I weak? No, you need to know where you're strong, too. You need to know your thoughts, your beliefs, your emotions, your sources of motivation. What motivates you? Here's the thing that's crazy about motivation is a lot of time, the motivation we're using is to please other people versus pleasing ourselves, And that, uh, that's not right. And just, just so you know, if you have trouble and you struggle with this self-awareness, it's supposed to be hard. It's not easy for anyone to do. And if you think that it's easy, you're probably not self-aware. How crazy is that, right? Okay. So let's talk about some written uh, exercises that you have. Uh, one of my favorites in, uh, was actually done in Stephen Covey's uh, book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, but it's the funeral test. You literally take and you write out your obituary and the speech you would want somebody to give about you at your funeral. And you literally write it. You take a pen, you take a piece of paper. I know that's old school, right? But you literally write down how you would want someone to speak about you at your funeral. What do you want them to say about you? What do you want them to remember? What do you want your family to say about you? What do you want your friends to say about you? What do you want your community to say about you? And you write that down. And then you take a look. Am I living that? Am I living it? Because look, we're all getting closer each day, right? We're grateful for the day. We're excited that we have one more day, but we're also one day closer to the end. I actually uh, follow a guy called Gary Vaynerchuk, and he recommended to become more self-aware and to be more present in the moment, to actually set a reminder on your phone. Now, this is going to, some of you are going to flip out when I say this, but I'm going to say it anyways. So he said to put a reminder in your phone that comes up every single day that says, you are going to die. And I did it. You are going to die. And that thing pops up in the middle of the day and it shocks you back to reality. It's like, oh my gosh, I need to enjoy today because I will die one day. That's a, that is a self-awareness right there in and of itself. And just say I went outside, enjoyed the 67 degree weather with my dog and enjoyed it the uh, first day of spring here in central Ohio. Uh, it was nice to enjoy the warm weather, but uh, it's killing my residuals. So uh, bring on the cold, baby. Bring it on. All right, back to uh, back to self-awareness. Sorry about that. The other thing you can do that's really fun, if you haven't done this, you got to do it, but make a bucket list. That's right. Write out a bucket list of everything you want to count. It, and here's the thing about the bucket list. It can be anything. Don't like let money hold you back. Don't let time hold you back. Write out your bucket list. If you had the money and you had the time and you could do anything you wanted to do, what would it be? And write that bucket list out. You know, if, if you wanted to climb Mount Everest, put it on there. If you want to take a, a cruise around the world, twice around the world, and do two laps, write that down. Whatever it is, in as distinct detail as you can do. You want to start uh, by an island and create an animal sanctuary, write that down. Whatever it is you want to do, a bucket list. It's a very cool thing to help you become self-aware. Um, so those were written. Let's talk about, I'm sorry, that was in writing, things you can do in writing. There's a bunch more, but those are my two favorites. Let's talk about tests you can take. Okay, there are actual tests you can take. Some people call them personality tests. And uh, they come up with different personalities. Now, there's 16 personality types, but we like to talk about four of them, right? In ACN, we call them what? We go by the, the, the fish, even though one of them is not a fish. It's actually a mammal. But anyways, uh, there's sharks, there's dolphins, there's urchins, and whales. It is very important that you understand your personality type and also be able to, under, to identify other people's personality types. It always cracks me up in ACN when people tell me they're a certain personality type. Oh, I'm a dolphin. And I'm like, you are not a dolphin. You are an urchin. And if I, you know them well enough to be able to say to them, like, look, you're an urchin. You're not a dolphin. They'll argue with you. No, I'm definitely, I am absolutely 100% a dolphin. And they will give you 18 reasons, a full PowerPoint presentation as to why they're a dolphin. And I'm like, 
sir, you are an urchin. And, <laughs> but it's important to understand what personality type you are. Why? Because when you're going to relate to other people, you need to understand that different personality types communicate differently and you want to communicate to them in a method that they can hear. And that comes in handy for business, comes in handy for personality, comes in handy for dealing with your kids, comes in handy for dealing with family. It is very, very important. So know and understand your personality type and there's a test you can take and answer the questions. These are online, by the way. And it will tell you what personality type you are. Now, some people that aren't an ACN, we have the DISC, right? The DISC test that you can take. And there's also the bear, lamb, tiger, owl. All of it's the same thing, but basically boiling it down to four different personality types. You need to know your type, okay? And that is very, very important to be self-aware. And not what you think you are. This is the important part. You need to know how you occur to other people. Because what you think you are is probably not what they think you are, or is a good chance of it, okay? So you need to know that. So that's the second way. The third way uh, you can become more self-aware is through thought processes. And there's multiple ones, but uh, here's a couple of my favorite. One is determining your why. Now, here's what we know. Your why in your brain that you will come up with, first off to start, is most likely to please other people. That's right, you heard me say that. Your why that you're coming up with will probably be something to please your parents, to please your spouse or significant other, or your kids. It's probably not your real why, because your real why is selfish. And none of us want to be selfish, right? We want to be giving. We're all givers. If you ask people, I'm a giver, right? Well, here's, how you, here's a technique mentally you can get to your real why. It's called the seven-level why. This website actually mentions it as a three-level why, but Dean Graziosi's book, Millionaire Secrets book, um, talks about a seven-level why. What is important to you? And then you ask yourself, why is that important to me? And whatever that answer is, you ask, why is that important? Why is that important? You do it seven times. It's best if somebody else questions you that won't let you off the hook. They'll make you answer it. And when you get to that last why seven times, you find out your real why. And it's never Never, never, never what you thought was the important part, okay? So that's a great one. Um, the next one is self-talk. Look, you got to guard your mind about the way you talk to yourself. Here's, I don't know about you, but I got an imaginary person inside my head who runs around like crazy. I call him Fred. I don't know if you've named yours or not, but mine talks to me all the time. And I get mine from the movie Drop Dead Fred. If you never saw that, it's about a little girl who has an imaginary friend who always gets her into trouble. It always makes bad decision, and this imaginary person does everything, but she gets blamed for it. She can see the imaginary person, but her parents and her family and her teachers can't. Drop dead Fred. Um, well, I got a Fred inside my head. Fred makes bad choices and talks to me bad all the time. You don't deserve that. You can't be as good as them. Look at these people. You'll never make it. Why are you trying so hard? Just sit back and let good be as good as can be, just go watch TV and veg out, you know, those types of talk, uh, that negative talk, that's Fred in my head, and you've got to work and guard against that, and that is a self-awareness technique. you got to understand, when you hear that little voice inside your head, and right now, for those of you out there just said, what little voice is he talking about? That voice, that voice right there that just said that to you, what little voice? That's it. But you have to become self-aware to recognize when that voice is talking to you and be able to understand this is not real. This is all of that crap that came up from when I was a kid and I brought it into my adult life and I'm manifesting it and allowing it to shape who I'm going to become because of this self-talk. So don't let Fred do that to you. You're welcome to borrow my name, Fred, if you want, but uh, he's mine in my head. Trust me, he and I are going to work. We're going to battle today. So here's another one, physical exercises. There are physical exercises you can do to help with your self-awareness. One of them is being aware of your body language. Look, I see people come into the uh, Saturday meetings and they come to Saturday meetings and you're looking at them from up front when you're talking, and they just look unhappy. And you'll talk to them and say, they say, yeah, I'm happy. And you say, really? Well, tell it to your face. A very simple way to show that you're in a good mood and a person that people want to be around is a smile. Learn how to smile, folks. 
So many people in this life are going around with a frown on their face. They're angry. They're uh, irritated. No one wants to be around that. And if you want to attract people to your business, you better be a happy person. And if you say, I am happy, then tell it to your face. You need to be happy. So body language, big. Another physical way to become self-aware is to take a 10-minute walk. A 10-minute walk in silence without your headphones on, just walking. Going for a walk gives you time to clear your head, commune with the outside world, since most of us are in a cubicle or a house or something all day long. It is a great way to become self-aware of your thoughts because you'll have thoughts that run through your head and you can deal with them while you're there. Reading is another way. No, reading no less than 10 minutes a day of a good self-help book, not a Harlequin romance model, not People Magazine, nothing like that. Something to help you if you need a list, get them from your mentor. And then one that I have just recently started working on is conscious breathing with meditation. My brain has a monkey going around in it who jumps around and bangs on my head and has a million different thoughts. Look, folks, if you were ever inside my head, you would run screaming getting out of there, like how can anybody ever survive living inside that head? I don't know how I do it, but I'm getting better with meditation. For the longest time, I thought it was hocus pocus. I was just like, whatever is this stuff? I'm not looking at it. Try it. You'll see how hard it is to sit silent for 10 minutes. And I recommend guided meditation. You can get great free apps on, uh, I use the Insight Timer which has a timer on it, you put headphones in and meditate, and it's a guided person to guide you through the breathing and things like that. And so then the last way, and I'll wrap up with this, and this, my friends, is the scariest one. And if it's the scariest, it means it's the most effective. And that is getting help from others. That's right, getting help from other people to help you become self-aware. Because here's the most important part about becoming self-aware. How do I occur to other people? Oh, I know who I am. I know who I am. I know what I stand for and everything like that. Well, that kind of talk means you're not self-aware because self-awareness is knowing what others think about you. How do you occur to them? And again, it's not important just to find out what are my weaknesses, but to find out what are my strengths. There's multiple different ways and people you can check with, but here is uh, my favorite to get uncomfortable, and that is this. Ask for constructive feedback. Now you can do it face-to-face, -face, you can do it by email, or you can do it by text. Here's what I know about face-to-face. -face. If the people like you, they're probably not gonna say what you need to hear. They're less likely. The more they like you, the less likely they are to tell you. Uh, the, the book actually recommends asking an ex, an, an ex uh, about uh, constructive feedback on you and what you can improve. Oh, they got a laundry list, guaranteed. They, they'll make a nice long list for you. But he says to do this, take an email, send them out to pick 25 people and send an email to them saying that you will not get upset, that you're going through a period of, of spiritual or of personal growth, and you need, you need them to do six things for you. List three strengths, you always start them off with three strengths that you have to get them comfortable, and then three things that you should work on in order. And tell them you will not get angry and you appreciate it and you would be happy to do the same for them if they're ever in a position where they want to do this, but this would really help you grow and you need complete and total honesty. And uh, if you do that, you will, get, uh, you will get a list of things that you may, first of all, you may never even know that you, they were your strengths. You might be like, really? People think I'm strong at that? Like the biggest thing that always freaks me out when people think that I'm a good public speaker. I am actually scared to death to speak in front of people. The reason I have so much energy and excitement is because I pace in the room in the back because I'm so nervous to get up there that when I get up there, I just bring it out as excitement because that's why I'm sweating all the time. That's why I keep the room ice cold. I'm scared to speak in public, scared to death. It's paralyzing. But I knew it was something I had to learn and overcome. But people think that's a strength of mine. They tell me that, oh, you're such a great public speaker. I'm like, if I told you the truth, I'm really scared to death. But anyway, so I occur to people as if I'm a good public speaker. That's how it occurs to them. But for me, it's on my weakness list. So how do you occur to other people? And other things you may think 
that you have as a strength, other people think of you as having as a weakness. So how do I occur? And then make a list of that and go to work on yourself. That's it. That's uh, I ripped through that again. This will be available on YouTube. If you don't have a YouTube channel, you can subscribe to that. I've got uh, I've got different videos I put out all the time that are uh, personal growth. They're also business related. So you can check that out on there. Uh, if you want to help me out, throw a thumbs up on my videos or a nice comment. It helps them rank better in the YouTube rankings. And uh, I'll also put it in our ACN group. So thanks for jumping on today. The fact that you got on the call today shows that you're somebody who's interested in improving every single day. That's step one in becoming self-aware. But take some of these exercises off this link and start doing a few of them. Do a few and watch what happens to your life. Have a great day, everyone. I will see you all at boot camp. And what is it? It's like 11 days or something like that. We will be in Baltimore. We're bringing half of the great state of Ohio out there to see you. So see you all soon.